Hello, this is David W. Parker. This is a programming today I learned. This is another Svelte um, Sapper application episode. We're going to go ahead and deploy the application now to Versal. Um, we're going to go ahead and tie it in with um, everything we need environment variable wise to send our registration emails that we set up in the Rails app, uh, API from the previous episode. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing um, that you need to do is sign up for Versal. Um, you can do that on your own time and figure that out. If you have issues with it, let me know, and I'll try to walk you through it. But I'm sure you could figure it out. We have a few code changes. So let's take a look at those real quick, and then we'll get started on it. So in our .env here, we're adding a new variable called, called API endpoint. Um, that is referenced actually in our server JS here. You can see we're returning it and setting it as a for part of the store. So we have access to our local host. And then the next thing is we've modified our package JSON to add a few more export commands. So the main thing we've added here are these tailwind build. So I want to build both of these and I want to build each of them in production. So they look like the watch ones, but minus the dash W and we've set the node environment production beforehand. So this will be build both. And then I added this export prod command where it's gonna go ahead and run the tailwind build and then the sapper export right after that. So very simple. Jumping over to sign in, all of these look the same more or less. The main difference is we wanna make sure that here where we used to have local host, we're gonna be importing the session. Now on this one we already were because we were testing for this uh, development on node environment so that we can preset things. So we already have the session imported, but now we have this uh, API endpoint and we can go ahead and put it on here. And that'll make it so in each environment we have access to the proper variable. Um, on the sign up, we weren't doing that, so we need to make sure we import stores and then from stores grab the session. And then the same thing, go ahead and put that right here where it used to be localhost. And finally, we're going to do the same thing in the nav, uh, so that way when we handle our sign out, we have the API endpoint. The other thing we made a small change is I renamed this from session to sesh, as we have the proper session now from um, Svelte, so and Sapper specifically. So we were just going to this is the local session that we're using, so that we can pass in for deleting and signing out. That's it in terms of code changes. So now we can go ahead and look at Versal. So I've already signed up here. I have a few different um, websites. This is the uh, actual application that we're running. So we can look at the finished product right here. Um, it's already deployed, but let's go ahead and see what I did to get there. So you'll do a new project, and then you'll have to go in. And if you don't see any things here, you need to go adjust your GitHub permissions find your repository and say allow, um, and then that allow you to choose it as a um, application, a Git repository, and use that as a part of your import. And so we'll just go ahead and copy this one again. Say select, and it's gonna try to load master, which is not gonna have these commands if you're following along from earlier, you'll see that this is episode nine branch. So this should fail. Um, the main thing we want to do, because we're going to override this and we're going to say npm run export prod, which doesn't exist yet in master or main. Um, and then we're going to set the API endpoint here to our API pipeline from our Rails app over here. So we have this staging environment and you can grab this URL here. And for now, because this is gonna end up being the master one, we'll go ahead and say add. And actually this doesn't even need to be the encrypted version, so we'll remove that for a minute, but we'll get back into that in just a second. So then we'll say deploy. And what's gonna happen, like I said, is it's gonna fail on the first one here. And the reason for that is because it doesn't have access to the command that is from this branch. If you're doing it this from a future episode and you're trying to do it, it should work because it'll be uh, backported and I will merge things into main and master or whatever. So 
if you have it and it's not working yet, what you can do is under settings here, you can go ahead and I think, believe it's under Git. Yeah, and you can set your custom production branch. So this will not have deployed yet. You can set it here to custom and then the branch name and then save that. Then over here back in environment variables, you can go ahead and set the API endpoint. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this API endpoint is being used for preview and production. Because this is the production environment right now, and like I get, again, I will add a preview environment in a future episode after this is released. Um, and we'll go through all of that, of course. We're going to have this environment variable be for both. In the actual application, real application, this would be, you know, the staging one will be for preview only, and the production one will be a different URL uh, for the production one only. But for our purposes, with this being the only environment being deployed to right now, it will have the one. So when you set up both of those, it should recognize that, hey, episode 9 is the one you want to use. Go ahead and automatically import properly. Then you can go back to the overview, I believe, and um, or actually you can just push to the, your branch, your episode 9 branch, and it'll be fine. So the next thing you'll want to do is you can go ahead and deploy it. It'll take a little bit of time. You'll see something uh, along these lines where it walks through all of the steps, uh, just like you would do if you deployed it locally in production mode. And then it'll give you several URLs here that it's been deployed to. Um, in a future episode, I may show you how to set a custom domain. If you'd like, just make a comment in the comments below. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um, but we want to copy this, one of these domains. We'll just copy um, the, the default one. Uh, you can copy whatever one you want. And over in your Rails app here, under the environment variables, you need to go ahead and set the host URL to that application. And the reason for that is that's needed for sending the emails that we did previously. So once all of that is done, and let's say you've restarted your sign over here, unless you already are running a full-time one, and you have this application up. So it's up, it's working. What we can do is, here, let me clear this out because that's un unimportant. And we'll go ahead and we have our email. And I just don't like that uppercase because I'm OCD. So I'm on sign up and I click submitting. And it's gonna take a little bit because it's gonna go and it says, please confirm your email address, just like we've done locally. And since I've allowed emails, I should be getting an email here. Yeah, so confirmation section says, please change your initialize config. And you can confirm your email below. That is one thing I didn't do in the other Rails episode, if you look over on our device, you could change this to your domain. And then you can go here and click confirm and you can hover over and you can see it has the proper URL, the proper domain for a versatile application. And it says, hey, your email address was confirmed. And we're on the sign in page. So I should now be able to go ahead and sign in. And we are signed in on our application. So that's it for deploying to Versal and checking out our emails that we have created so far. So now that we have the basics and the main section of getting logged in and logged out, we can actually start building a real application. Uh, if you guys like and subscribe to this, that'd be awesome. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.